I'm going to talk to you about the subject of when rebellion becomes godly. Now, we know rebellion is something bad, and it is mostly bad. In 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is almost always ungodly. It's wrong to talk back to your parents. It's wrong to go against the police. It's wrong to not listen to the principal. It's wrong to cuss out your supervisor. It's wrong for you to not let your husband guide the home. However, there is a time when rebellion becomes the godly thing to do. Acts 5.29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. I can rebel against authority when they begin to go against the ultimate authority, the Lord Jesus Christ. When your husband tells you to do something that goes against God, that's when you can reject what he says. When your parents tell you to do something that's against God, that's when you don't have to do what they say. When the president or a king or ruler, whoever he may be, tells you to do something against God, going against what they say and rebelling then becomes godly. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. The first one I want to tell you about is Rahab the harlot. When her king, the king of Jericho, he sends some men over to kill the spies that came in. You know, the children of Israel sent some spies in there. She hides them and then lies about it. A rare case where lying isn't wrong. She told an outright lie to the men that came to her house that night in Joshua 2, 3 through 6. Let's read a little bit of this story. It says, And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. So she says, I don't even know where they are now. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Whither the men went, I uh, won't not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. So she pretended that they ran off, but she was really hiding them in her house. Rahab rebelled against her king and and Jericho because they were wicked. She heard about Israel and the God of heaven. She chose the true God over her corrupt leadership. If, you know, it saved her own life to do this good deed and also gave her two mentions in the New Testament. Josh, or James 2.25, it says, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Hebrews 11.31, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. A perfect example of when rebellion becomes godly is Rahab the harlot. Rahab the harlot was a rebel that became godly when she rebelled against the king of Jericho, rebellion became godly in the case of Rahab. Now the next one, Daniel breaks the law of the land and rebellion became godly. And Daniel 6, 4, it says, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him just like they did the Lord. When Jesus Christ walked this earth, they tried to find fault with him, and they still try to find fault with him, but they couldn't find any fault in him or in Daniel. I mean, they they looked everywhere. I mean, they they hacked into his computer. They probably looked on his what websites he visited. They looked to make sure he wasn't stealing anything from anybody. They looked to make sure he didn't have any magazines under his bed. They probably... Uh, got some type of search warrant, busted his house down, and looked through every nook and cranny to find something 
wrong with Daniel. And that's what lost people do. They examine you and try to find fault in you. That's why you have to be always alert, always vigilant about what's going on. Because people will use anything against you that they can. Now Daniel 6, 5, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. The only way they were going to catch Daniel breaking the law of the land is by inventing laws that go against his faith, which is exactly what they will do to us eventually and did already on a small scale. They will make it illegal to go to church. They will make it illegal to carry a Bible. They will make it illegal to have a church website or Christians and conservative videos on the Internet. They'll make that stuff illegal. If you're found doing any of this stuff, then eventually you'll be arrested or fined. And the only way to lock up law-abiding citizens is to frame them or make laws that are stupid. That's the only way you can get good law-abiding citizens locked up is to frame them or make stupid things against the law. Daniel 6.6 6. Then these presidents and princes assembled get together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. They are trying to win the king over. In Daniel 6, 7, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together. All these big shots got together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god our man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Notice how they tried to flatter the king. They said, if anybody asks a petition of any god or man for thirty days, but you, king, they need to be cast into the den of lions. So this flattered the king a little bit, and all these wicked big shots in high places got together against a godly man which was Daniel. The godly man wasn't hurting anybody, but they were jealous of him. Daniel 6, 8 through 10, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, watch what Daniel does here. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, you know, the, that nobody should pray to God or any man for 30 days, look what he does. He went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So Daniel didn't change anything. So Daniel finds out that you can't pray to God anymore. You know what he does? He rebels because it is better to obey God rather than men. It even says he left the windows open. He was hoping there was peeping times. He was hoping those three Nimrods would get their drones out and start filming him while he's praying right there. Rebellion became godly for Daniel. He wasn't going to give them a salute to what they were doing. He wasn't going to say, yes, sir, I'll go exactly with what you're doing even though it against, goes against God. You know the story. The king regrets signing the bill because he liked Daniel, but it can't be undone. Daniel is thrown into the den of lions, but the Lord delivers him, and those wicked men end up killed themselves. So Daniel, he never stopped praying, and he obeyed God rather than men. Rebellion became godly for Daniel. Rebellion became godly for Rahab. When men of this world tell you to do something contrary to the scriptures, it's better to obey God rather than men. When, you know, a lot of times people ask me, well, my parents tell me to do bad things. I know I'm supposed to honor my father and mother. But what do I do when they tell me to go buy them alcohol, to go buy them uh, 
something that I shouldn't buy them, to uh, perform acts that I shouldn't. Well, in that case, it's better to obey God rather than men. In Acts 5, 17 and 18, let's look, look at this other story. The Lord breaks the apostles out of prison and wants them to preach. In Acts 5, 17 and 18, Then the high priest rose up and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. So they got put in prison for the Lord's work, for, for going out and preaching the gospel. These men got the apostles and put them in the common prison. Now, verse 19, But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go and go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and they found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut out with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. So now they know that they've escaped. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then, when, then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Listen to what they asked them. They said, Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Now listen, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So these people said, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And Peter's like, we ought to obey God rather than men. So Peter and these apostles with them, rebellion became godly. They were preaching the gospel, which those people didn't want them to do. They got put in prison for it. The Lord breaks them out of prison, gives them a, man to go, a command to go out and preach. They're told not to preach. They rebelled against the man's authority. And rebellion became godly because they ought to obey God rather than men. Peter and the apostles were out there preaching up a storm and outright rebellion against the Jews because the Lord told them to. Rebellion became godly. They preached even though it was illegal because you should obey God rather than your, your king. If your king's telling you to do something wrong, you take God's decision on something. Because you should obey God before your king, before your parents, before your husband, before your supervisor. That is what Peter and the apostles did. They went out and preached. And I doubt they even had on a mask. I bet they weren't even vaccinated. They had the real cure for the real sickness. I mean, they were rebels. In Acts 5, 30 through 33, it says, The God of our fathers, this is what Peter's and the apostles out there preaching, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. So they're not supposed to preach in this name, yet they just keep on. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So they were such rebels to what those men were, were wanting done. I mean, they wanted them dead. They wanted them put in prison. But then it says in Acts 5.41, And they departed from the presence of the council, 
rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Rebellion for godly reasons will cause more suffering than rebelling for the devil's reasons. In 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're rebelling for godly reasons, you, you will suffer persecution. And it says in Acts 5.42, And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And this is after being told not to preach in that name anymore. They continued to rebel their heads off because rebellion became godly. And you're already seeing the start of something in this country. I mean, it's become very apparent that this, the big shots, the high up people, the high polluting people, the people with a lot of pull, the people who are held in, in high regard, hate God. They hate your Bible. They hate you because you make it harder for them to live their sick, twisted, perverted lifestyle in peace without any resistance. So they want rid of you. They want rid of your church. They want rid of your Bible. They want rid of your family. And even though you're a law-abiding citizen, you don't cause anybody trouble. You keep to yourself for the most part. They want rid of you. They can't get rid of somebody that goes by the law. They have to frame you or they're, it would be easier to just make laws that go against your faith. That way you break the laws and they can lock you up. They can put you in a camp somewhere. So they're going to eventually, they're going to say, it's against the law to go to church. It's against the law to have a Bible. It's against the law to pray. It's against the law to be a Christian. That way, they can get rid of you. They want rid of you. They don't like you. They want to be the final authority in their own life. And you're going out teaching that the Bible is the final authority. And it goes against their lifestyle. They hate you. And Jesus Christ said, Marvel not if they hate you. You know that they hated me before they hated you. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world hates you. So you shouldn't love the world and obey men over God. You should obey God rather than men. Now, I'm all about going by the law of the land. That is, until the law of the land goes against what God said in his laws. But this has been rebellion when rebellion becomes godly. And I hope that we will all, I hope and pray that we will all have the courage like Daniel and Rahab and Peter and the apostles that when men go against God, we can become rebels and make rebellion become godly.